Lipoproteins. Uh, there is a lot, a lot of stuff here. Um, I don't know. I think it's pretty interesting, and uh, it, it's really not as bad as it seems. If you just try to like memorize things, I think it makes it a lot harder. There should be a little bit of rhyme and reason. It just makes it go down a little bit smoother. So uh, we'll try to break it down. Um, <laughs> these are the biggest. Smaller, 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 smallest, right? The, the main difference in terms of size has to do with the amount of lipids, right? So we're increasing the number of lipids on the left side and we have less on the right side. And, and one, proteins are more dense, but two, you can think of it as the, the density, the number of proteins compared to lipids. So here, you know, here, here's a lot of lipids. So there, there's a low density of proteins. Here, there's not a lot of lipids. There's a high density of proteins. That's always how I thought of it. Now, this name, whoever came up with this, is either very stupid or very evil. They call this an intermediate density. And so I think I always thought like, okay, high density, low density, it belongs over there. That is not the case. It is intermediate between VLDL and LDL, which makes sense because this becomes this and this becomes this as they shed lipids. And we'll get into all of this. It should also make sense that the high density lipoprotein is mostly proteins and not a lot, a lot of lipids. It does have a role in taking up lipids, but its main role is carrying around a bunch of proteins and giving them to the other lipoproteins. Um, so this is a, like a basic schematic. Uh, you eat a bunch of uh, lard and brownies and whatnot. So a lot of fat comes in. It's packaged into chylomicrons. Um, this is now going to deposit uh, triglycerides into triacylglycerols into uh, just tissue, various tissue, fats, muscles, who cares? Now it's called a chylomicron remnant. It's just, you know, it's still got some fat, but it's, it's just a leftover thing. It is now going to be taken up by the liver. Now, separately, I mean, they're kind of related, but like, all right, now, now, new event, separate event, the liver can generate, can exocytose via LDL. VLDL, which has triglycerides and a little bit of cholesterol, um, can, can lose that triglycerides to become an IDL, which is really, they should just, it's just a VLDL remnant is really what it is. And, and again, this is intermediate density between this and this. Um, this IDL now, um, you know, this, this is now a little hazy, a couple different things can happen. It can lose triglycerides to the liver, it can be taken up by the liver and, and modified, or it can trade with an HDL via a CTP. Really not that important. It will somehow now become an LDL. Um, and LDLs are mostly cholesterol. You should definitely know that. And cholesterol is really the main thing that's contributing to atherosclerosis uh, in, in the blood vessels. Um, this LDL now is going uh, kind of on a suicide mission to the tissues where it will, it will deliver this cholesterol and be absorbed and then degraded. That's, that's an overview, and then there's a million different proteins we need to know. We'll get into it. Um, so uh, B100... B100, B100 and B48, they play some nebulous role in stabilizing and blah, blah, blah. We don't really care about that. The main thing we want to focus is that the 100, so it's 100 because it's the 48, 48 is 48% 48 of the, the, the uh, amino acids of the 100. How is that possible? Was it a splicing thing? No, it's actually post-transcriptional editing. We make a premature stop codon. So we get 48% of the whole thing. Okay, well, we're losing that other 52%. What, what kind of information is there? What, what domains of the protein? The only thing we really need to know is it has the LDL binding receptor. So the LDL receptor is on certain cells and it grabs on to this, uh, this domain of the ApoB100 and pulls it in. But it doesn't do that for the 48. Again, the 48 is missing that. So all I would know for the 100 is it has the LDL receptor ligand. The 48 does not. It is missing it. And then we have, so this is apo, you know, apolipoprotein 100, apolipoprotein B48, apolipoprotein. So just E. Um, I think of E for exiting. Exiting where? Exiting to the liver specifically. Um, and uh, this has an important association with Alzheimer's. So apoE4, I always think of like four as forget. And then ApoE2, uh, it's kind of silly, but uh, Game of Thrones, they always say, the North remembers. Well, the North, it's two words, hence ApoE2, remembers, remembering. So ApoE4 is bad. If you have ApoE4, you're more likely to get Alzheimer's. ApoE2 is a, is a, is a good allele. You're less likely to get Alzheimer's. It's protective. A apolipoprotein C2 is for, and of course, again, all of these are just on scattered, interesting distributions, which we'll get into on various lipoproteins. C2 is for cleaving. So as the lipoproteins are floating through the blood, they're going to interact with lipases, which 
are going to be inactive unless turned on by the C2. So the C2 helps the, the lipoprotein lipase become active, which is going to then cleave the triglycerides. Um, and that means that a chylomicron will shed uh, fats because they're being cleaved and become a chylomicron remnant. A VLDL will have its uh, triglyceride cleave becoming an IDL, really just a VLDL remnant. And Again, IDL is kind of tricky about how it becomes an LDL. It, it could actually be a hepatic lipase, which is sort of a different thing. Um, now, APOE and APOC2 are gifts from the HDL. HDL is a nice guy. It's a nice guy and, it, and it's the good one for us, right? HDL is the good cholesterol. LDL is the bad one. Um, and uh, one of the reasons... <laughs> so it's good in that it's healthy, but it's good also in that it's nice and it's gifting things. It's gifting E and C2 to other lipoproteins. Um, so let's go ahead and, and play this out. Uh, a chylomicron has an ApoB48. Why is it, what is 48? 48 means that it does not have, it doesn't interact with the LDL receptor. It's not going to be taken up, absorbed, endocytosed by various cells and degraded. That's not its job. Its job is to give fats while still in the blood and then go to the liver. APOC2, well, we want to cut those fats and get them off the chylomicron, so we need this for to help cleave with the lipoprotein lipase. APOE, yeah, I just said it gets taken up by the liver, so it needs an APOE. Um, APOB100, what is the 100? It will ultimately interact with the LDL receptor on a normal cell, be taken up and degraded. But not yet, right? And actually, let's talk about this. VLDL becomes an IDL. The IDL is still not taken up by a normal cell. It becomes the LDL and it's the LDL. So because this becomes this, the ApoB100 is not actually really useful in terms of the LDL until it's until we get to the the, the, verse, the last version, the LDL. The LDL is taken up into the cell and degraded. Um, ApoC2, yeah, we have a lot of triglycerides we want to cut. ApoE, well, the VLDL becomes the IDL when it loses a lot of its lipids. The ApoE is transformed sometimes in the LDL by being taken up. In other words, E for exit, it's exiting from the bloodstream, going to the liver, it gets modified, then it gets pushed right back out as an LDL. And the APO, the HDL, we'll talk about this later, it has an APOC2 and an APOE, but not to use, not for itself. It's gifting these, it's giving these, and sometimes taking them back from the other lipoproteins. Um, and here we can just kind of see a basic blueprint of what a lipoprotein looks like. Um, all right, so this whole thing again, we're going to get into it, we're going to break down, it should make more sense. Um, so as our, you know, before we get into it, let's just really make clear, a lipoprotein is moving through the blood, here we're in a capillary, and it's, here's our endothelial cell, which is near muscle cells or uh, adipocytes, and it's, it's covered in all of these APOC2 proteins. These will interact with the lipoprotein lipase right there, which is off until it binds, it interacts with this. Now it's turned on, boom, these guys are now lunch meat. They're going to be taken up and swallowed and cut up and now pushed into the various tissue beds. So that, that's just how the lipoprotein lipase is working. So you eat a bunch of brownies, um, fat comes in, um, you know, we have bile to emulsify the fat to increase the surface area so that, uh, you know, our hepatic lipases can have access to it and cut it up. Um, you can even see right here, I hope this is clear, like this is a glycerol and that's our one fatty acid. So this is a monoglycerol, not that that's that important. Goes into the intestinal cell, blah, 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 who cares, gets pushed out as a chylomicron. Chylomicrons are, are, are they don't go into the blood though. They go into the lymphatic system and in, into in, in a lacteal. And the lacteal is the lymphatic system ultimately merges back up with the circulatory system around your neck, this subclavian vein. So that's where it's going to enter systemic circulation. That does mean, though, it is, it is, we're pushing these, these nonpolar fats into the blood, and they're not getting, like, checked and modified by the liver the first time through. So this is a first pass thing. It will eventually go to the liver. Just, it just hits the circulation once before going to the liver. Let's follow it. All right, so here's a color micron again. We're just zooming in now, right? It's not, <laughs> it's not inflating. We're just zooming in now. So here's our, here's our color micron. All they have right now is ApoB48, which for our purposes, doesn't do shit. ApoB48 is just the shorter version of ApoB100 and doesn't do anything that we really care about. I'm sure it's more complex. It plays a role in stability. Who cares? For us, it does nothing. All right, so HDL, just a nice, solid, good dude, um, real minch, has an ApoE, ApoC2, and it's going to gift them, right? Here is our ApoC2, C for cleave. Here is our ApoE, E for exit. 
This thing is chock full of the, the brownie fat that you just, all the butter is just stored in here as triglycerides. We want to give this to adipocytes and maybe other cells. Let's just say adipocytes for right now. The lipoprotein lipase is, again, we're in the peripheral tissue. This is an endothelial cell. This is inactive, though, until it interacts with the APOC2. Now that it's active, ha -ta, ha -ta, ha -ta, ha -ta. That's, that's me cutting all of the, the triglycerides and putting them into the adipocyte where we can get stored. This shrinks the size of the chylomicron. We now call it a chylomicron remnant. It has also, it doesn't need the APOC2 anymore, right? The, uh, the HDL says, give me that back. So it takes the, it takes the APOC2. We do have the APOE. We're now going to use it. E for exit. We're exiting the bloodstream. We're going specifically into the liver. Um, new event. New event. Uh, we are now making uh, a, a VLDL. The uh, liver is taking a lot of triglycerides, a little bit of cholesterol, and it's patching, pa packing, packaging it up into a VLDL. Keep in mind that the VLDL, very low density, means... It's a low density of proteins, which is just a ridiculous amount of lipids. Not as much as the color micron, but the next most. So, you know, color micron should be called very, 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 very low density lipoprotein, but we just call it a color micron. Um, so this has a ton of lipids, a ton of triglycerides, a ton of cholesterol, and it has the ApoB100. It is ultimately going to use this. Technically, it won't use it. Recall that the VLDL becomes the IDL, which becomes the LDL, and the LDL is the one who's going to use the 100. But you know, so it needs it because it's ultimately going to transform to something that needs it. So ApoB100, again, so we can't really do anything now until nice dude HDL comes over and gives it a, uh, a C2 and gives it an E. Um, so here we have our VLDL, the lipoprotein lipase, interacts with the C2. Boom, all of the fats are going out, getting cleaved, going into the adipocyte. Gets a little bit smaller. We got an IDL, which is a VLDL remnant. Um, there's less triglycerides because we're mo when I say we're cleaving, we're cleaving the triglycerides. Keep in mind that there's there's triglycerides and cholesterol. We're treating cleaving triglycerides, less of those, still have the cholesterol. Um, this IDL now, a bunch of different ways you can trade. You can have hepatic lipase. I, I think just the main way to know, just to simplify it, is just it it you know, and it makes sense. It has this APOE. Just to, let's just say them almost all always, and I think this is what they'll ask you is that it just goes to the liver. It is taken up somehow modified, who cares, and, and then it spit right back out, right back out, right? This is not like the chylomicron going in and the, and the VLDL. Those are separate events. This is like linked. It goes to the liver and immediately gets pushed back out. It is now called an LDL. The, the main difference is maybe it lost a little bit of triglycerides and it now lost this APOE. This LDL is now going to go and be absorbed by some random cell and uh, degraded and have, what does the LDL have? Almost all just cholesterol. The cholesterol is gonna be used. Remember cholesterol is good for, it's a fluidity buffer in the membrane. It can help make certain hormones. It's just useful for a lot of different things. Um, and this is just a same thing. This is just a picture of the LDL binding with the receptors, being endocytosed, and then just uh, being merged with a lysosome and just being absolutely degraded um, so that the cell can get the cholesterol. The whole idea is getting cholesterol there. Um, it doesn't, again, just to really, you know, take this home, it doesn't have APOE. E is for, <laughs> I, I guess I should be more specific. E is for exiting the bloodstream to the liver. This is exiting the bloodstream, but it's not going home. It's not going to the liver. I always thought of this as like, you know, it's like a kamikaze mission. And, and Pearl Harbor, I think like, they're like, oh no, like, they're just trying to make it dramatic. But at the end of the movie, they're like, spoiler, um, they're, they're trying to get the, they're going on a big attack mission and they, they realize that they, they can't have enough bullets or something unless they get rid of like half the gasoline. But that means they can only make it to the enemies and not back. So, so it's like a suicide mission. Kind of same thing here is you're not going to go back home. You're not going back to the liver. You're gonna, you have a horrible death awaiting you. You're going to the peripheral tissue. You're not coming back. You don't have the APOE and you're ultimately going to be degraded. I also thought of Gattaca, which doesn't fit as well, but I just thought this is an awesome scene. Uh, you're not coming back. Um, all right, more apolipoproteins. Um, so CE, so now on HDL specifically. So HDL has a lot of proteins that is gifting to people, but it also has some of its its own proteins that it uses for itself. Again, this is high density, high density, high density of proteins, meaning not a lot of lipids. Some, but not a lot. CETP is for trading. It trades with the other lipoproteins. I think all of them, the LDLs and IDLs, maybe not chylomicrons, um, and it trades. It's going to give them 
uh, uh, triglycerides in exchange for uh, cholesterol. Um, and, um, uh, oh wait, no, I, excuse me. I think it's doing the opposite. It, it's giving cholesterol in exchange for triglycerides. Um, maybe fact check me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what happens. Cause I think all it has is cholesterol for the most part. I think that's all it has to trade. I could be wrong. Fact check me. Um, a one then, uh, it's definitely for trading. A one is going to bind to ABCA one, which is on various cells, um, and, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Actually, no, we'll talk about that now. It binds to ABCA1. ABC1 is an efflux transporter. So a cell has too much cholesterol for whatever reason, and it's saying, it's coughing. <laughs> I can't. Please get rid of this cholesterol. It, it's The ABCA1 is pushing the cholesterol out onto the HDL, which is binding to it. Um, A1 also is going to activate something called LCAT. LCAT converts cholesterol, which is kind of, it's definitely not polar, but it's kind of polar to a cholesterol ester, which is super nonpolar. And if things are nonpolar, they get buried deeper inside, right? I think of like a hydrohook quark. So it's going to get deeper into the lipoprotein. All right, let's go ahead and just, you know, take a look at this. Uh, probably the cell that has too much cholesterol is going to be something like a macrophage. We'll talk about that in a second. Too much cholesterol. Here's our HDL. It's just a little little baby. It's pretty. Um, it binds to the ABCA1, which is going to spit cholesterol out, which is interacting with the A1. Now A1 is going to activate LCAT. LCAT, what does LCAT do? LCAT is going to convert a cholesterol here, notice the OH group, to a cholesterol ester with just this. Which one of these is more polar? Definitely this one. If I had a substance, would, you know, what's going to be on the outside interacting with water? More this one. This one is going to be deep buried into the core. And that's exactly what we see here, right? Free cholesterol is on the outside of the lipoprotein. The cholesterol ester is deep on the inside. Um, now this HDL can go ahead and, aha, I had it right the second time. Uh, my correction was cracked. So here's my HDL and all it really has to trade is cholesterol. So it's going to give cholesterol to an IDL. Um, and that kind of makes sense, right? The whole idea of IDL going to LDL is that we're getting more cholesterol. Um, and, cause that's what an LDL is. So there's a little bit of triglycerides left and it's saying, uh, uh, give me all those. I'm going to give you cholesterol. And you know what? I'm taking this dang APOE cause you're not, you're not going to, you're not going to need it. Cause LDLs slash you is going to go on this suicide mission. It takes triglycerides. It can then go. It also does this with LDL, but I don't know. Ignore that one. Um, it, can, it then goes to the liver and it, and it gives the liver a lot of these fats and, and maybe a little bit of cholesterol as well. Right? It, like, it's not like it does this ETP every time. So that's like a, so it can do the trade. Great. Now, separately, it can go to the liver and it says, Hey, I just scavenged from the blood vessels, from the, the, the cells, a lot of triglycerides, a lot of cholesterol. Here you go. Do whatever you want with them. And, and one nice thing that we can do is we can convert this to bile and then excrete some of it. Um, uh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, that was complicated, but so what is the HDL is just going to, uh, suck up a lot of cholesterol from cells that don't want it anymore. Um, so that means it's actually really good for atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is mostly due to cholesterol, not, not so much triglycerides, cholesterol deposition in the blood vessels. So HDL is like Kirby's sucking up all of this cholesterol and taking it to the liver where you can, you know, liver's going to make stuff. You poop it out. Um, LDL, it would be the opposite. LDL is carrying cholesterol around and sometimes going to lose this cholesterol. It could be contributing to atherosclerosis. This is why we say HDL is the good, LDL is the bad. Um, VLDL is not as high on our radar because, again, it's more triglycerides. Um, more specifically, the uh, somehow LDL you know, took a wrong turn at Albuquerque. It, you know, here's the blood over here, right? Here, here's our plasma. It's going to move through the endothelial cell right here. It's going to move to the intima, so subendothelial layer. It is going to, I don't know, it's going to get oxidized as things just do for whatever reason over time. Um, I don't know, that's bad. And, and the macrophage comes, you know, monocyte is patrolling and it goes, hey, what the, what the fuck are you doing in here? So it starts gobbling up all of the oxidized low density lipoprotein particles. But you know what? There's too many of them. There's too many of them. It, it overdoes it. It's me at Thanksgiving. It's, it's eating way more than it should. It's getting too stuffed and then it dies. It dies. It becomes a foam cell. It's now permanently stuck there and, you know, lots of bad things happen. One of them is that as it's dying, it sends out these help signals, which make the problem worse. This is a positive feedback because these help signals get more monocytes to come in. They think, they, they think oh, I can eat like, seven, you know, 17 hot dogs, no problem. They also eat too much oxidized lipoproteins. They swell, more foam cells. This is atherosclerosis. So this is the beginning steps. So um, 
in, uh, more specifically now, or I guess that's the LDL component. Now, the other side is that um, a macrophage, could be other cells, let's say macrophage, it's in an arterial wall. Hopefully we get to it before it's a foam cell. It's like, oh my God, there's too much cholesterol. So it's spitting this out with an ABCA1, which is binding to the ApoA1 of an HDL. Um, so the, the, the HDL is now taking in a lot of this cholesterol. So this is also, the, a lot of this is part of the maturation process of the, um, I don't think it was like the evolution of a uh, HDL particle. So, you know, binds the ABCA1, <laughs> sucks up that, that cholesterol. Um, the APO uh, A1 is now going to activate LCAT. LCAT's job is to turn a cholesterol, which is kind of on the outside because it's a little bit polar, into a cholesterol ester, which is buried deep on the inside of the HDL. Or, yeah, the HDL. The HDL now takes this to the liver and uh, boom, we make some bile, which, you know, we just need bile or maybe we, we hope, maybe we have too much cholesterol and we're going to lose some of this bile. Or you could, you know, we can help deliver it to like the adrenal cortex of the testes because they definitely need cholesterol to make these nonpolar cholesterol based uh, hormones like, you know, testosterone or progesterone or aldosterone, etc. Um, atherosclerosis. Atheros is the pasty fat. Sclerosis is the, the fibrous cap the, and the muscle. Um, so here, this is, you know, this is the blood. And then we said that the, um, the, the, in here is where we said the lipo, the, the LDL particles are going, and then the uh, macrophage says, "Hey, what are you doing? Gobbles it up. Too much macro, uh, foam cell dies, recruits more, and then, and then it's just this awful thing." So this is the ather. This is all the fat. These are all the foam cells that ate too much of the cholesterol, um, and then to protect this, uh, the body has muscle cells and fibroblasts start laying down this layer. So this is the sclerosis. This is the athero. Um, all right, a little bit of a review. Kyler Micron has a B48, which for our purposes does nothing. It is post-transcriptional editing. We get rid of the LDL receptor ligand. Um, it gets the APOC2 and the E from the nice HDL. That's because we want to cleave these triglycerides and we want it to be taken up by the liver. It, 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 it's going to go through the lymphatic system and at the neck, at the thoracic duct. It merges with the subclavian vein. So it's going to have a first pass metabolism. Um, and it's just giving uh, fats, like we said, the tissues. VLDL has the 100, meaning it has the receptor ligand. That's because, does the VLDL, actually the VLDL might use it a little bit. Some of the VLDLs actually might be taken up. Uh, but but I think the, the, we should think of it as VLDL becomes IDL becomes LDL, and the LDL is the one that needs this LDL receptor ligand, literally named for the thing that needs an LDL receptor. Um, again, we're getting nice gifts, the C2 and the E from the HDL. C2, because we have a lot of triglycerides, let's cleave them. APOE, because IDL often goes to the liver, it's reabsorbed, so the E exiting to the liver, uh, we need that. And then the and then it becomes IDL, and, and we just said there's a couple different ways, mainly just going to the liver with the help of this APOE to become uh, an LDL. LDL is, you know, reborn from the ashes of the IDL, uh, which is just a VLDL remnant. Uh, it's mostly just cholesterol, that's all. Um, ApoB100, meaning it has the LDL receptor ligand because it's the LDL. Its job is to go on this suicide mission where it says, I'm not coming home, boys. Uh, and and it, it gets absorbed into, you know, probably like the adrenal cortex where it's then broken down into a lysosome and we now have cholesterol that we can make uh, cortisone and aldosterone from. Um, we don't need APOC2. APOC2 is for activating lipoprotein lipase, which makes triglycerides. But we just said it's mostly cholesterol, so that's not needed. So it should make sense, right? Pure memorization is great, and there's a lot of memorizing. Some of this stuff is random as shit, but like, it makes it so much easier if you try to follow the story. HDL, more stories. Um, liver and intestine makes this. It is going to, it's, it's the, yeah, we'll get into this. It's going to scavenge cholesterol. ABCA1 pumps this out from like a foam cell or whatever. Uh, macrophage and gives it to the HDL. Um, A1 uh, also is going to ac activate LCAT, which is going to turn cholesterol into a cholesterol ester. It's packaged in the, the, the center of the HDL, and somehow this is important for its spiritual journey evolution to a mature HDL. CETP is for trading. All it has is cho cholesterol or cholesterol esters, so it's going to give them an exchange for triglycerides, and um, this is one of the ways that an IDL can become an LDL. But again, Really, I wouldn't focus too much on like the complex journey of IDL to LDL. I probably looked this up too much. I don't think you need to know that much for the NBM on that that one particular point. Um, it's going to take 
some of these leftover stuff to the liver. The liver can do whatever it wants with it. One of the things might be nice is turn it into bile and excrete it. If we have too much, right? We definitely need some. Um, it is also playing a role at donating C2 and APOE to various lipoproteins for cleaving and for exiting to the liver. Um, we think of it as H for healthy. It's this nice hero because it scavenges. It's going to get rid of the cholesterol from those macrophages of those foams, the foam cells so I don't have atherosclerosis. It's going to take this uh, cholesterol and, and, and maybe help us turn it into, you know, poopy so that we can get it out of the body. That, that's, that's also good, right? It's taking the liver and saying, hey, you're smart. Like, can you deal with all of this stuff? It's probably not good inside of the blood vessel. And I don't want my chylomicrons and my uh, VLDLs. Like, so fat is, fat's bad, but, you know, give or take. Too much fat's bad, definitely. And having a lot of adipocytes is bad, but the worst thing about fat is if it's in the blood too much and if the cholesterol is in the blood too much. So it would be really bad if my chylomicrons and my VLDLs didn't have C2. Because if you can't cleave, then a VLDL stays a VLDL and a chylomicron stays a chylomicron and then it will stay in your blood forever. And you know what? Eventually those lipids are going to leak out and they're going to get where they don't need to be. And that's going to cause hyperlipidemia. Hyperlipid, hyper too much, lipid, lipids, emia in the blood. Too much lipids in the blood, that's bad. That's atherosclerosis. Cholesterol is worse than triglycerides, but they're, they're both still bad. So the C2, we need it. Otherwise, we have too much of those two lipoproteins I just mentioned in the blood. Same thing with APOE, right? Just because you have a C2 activated lipoprotein lipase, yeah, you're, you're going to lose some triglycerides. If you don't lose all of them, you still have some left. So if I didn't have APOE, sure, I'd have a chylomicron remnant, I'd have a VLDL remnant and IDL, but they just sit in the blood for a long time and that, that'd, be, that'd be bad. So um, for these three reasons, and maybe this one, this one's actually a little, you know, kind of befuddles me, not important. Um, for these three reasons, maybe four, uh, we can think of HDL as the <laughs> H for healthier, H for hero. That just came to me. Um, normal values, HDL around 50, LDL around 120. Combined, we want it less than 200. But again, HDL is the good one, LDL is the bad one. Um, triglycerides, 120. Um, now, there's there's uh, a couple of, you know, sometimes we call this dis-beta, uh, uh, but, but I would just think of this as primary hyperlipidemia. So these are genetic diseases that might be, uh, primary means genetic. We'll see secondary in a second. You know, you're just eating too many brownies. But um, genetic diseases lead too much lipoproteins in the blood. So um, there's this there's nice saying, 1LP, 2LD. B adds V, three is E, four gets more. Um, and uh, I would I would know that that four and two B are the most common. So if you get questions, they're honestly probably on these because these are just tiny and not that important. So, you know, if you, if you don't have a lot of time, just memorize what two B and four do. Um, all right, this is really helpful, right? One LP, what are we talking about? LP as in LPL, lipoprotein lipase. You have issues with lipoprotein lipase or the activation of lipoprotein lipase via uh, APOC2, this is what happens. Um, you're going to uh, accumulate too many chylomicrons. At first, I thought it might be also, well, you should also accumulate too many VLDLs, but technically VLDL does have the B100, so it theoretically could be taken up by an LDL receptor. So I'm, I guess you'd see a big rise in chylomicrons, small rise in VLDLs, but that's just how, that's just like the truth and, and like in the logic of it. But just memorize that as chylomicrons here. And again, that should make sense, though. They cannot be broken down. Um, and, and so they're, they're not going to become chylomicron remnants. So they just s s hang around. If you have too much lipids in the blood, um, too, too much fats can, can just deposit in the skin and give you, uh, you know, xanthoma. So you'll get a xanthoma uh, specifically in the skin in this case. Um, oh, spoil it. Uh, two LD, what are we talking about? Well, this one's easy. LD as an LDL. So this is where you have... Um, uh, you, LDL is sticking around because it doesn't have the L. Uh, the LDL receptor on peripheral tissues is screwed up, or the ApoB100 binding domain is specifically screwed up. Um, and uh, again, this would only affect the LDLs because, yeah, sure, a VLDL and an IDL also have the B100, but the B100, the LDL, you know, binding portion is really for the LDL. Um, and you get xanthomas as with you, as it makes sense for all of these, but I would just know that they're tendinous, right? So they'll tell you in a vignette where it is. And they'll tell you the blood levels too. Even if you didn't memorize, you know, what xanthoma goes where, you should still be able to figure it out. But this is like an extra useful pro tip if you know where they are. Um, B adds V. So we have two types. We have 2A and 2B. 2B. B adds V. So LDL and VLDL. I'm actually not sure exactly like the, the, uh, the like, 2A makes sense. I'm not actually sure the proteins that cause the 2B. Um, 
Note that for 2A and 2B, and, and 2B is the more common one. Um, uh, you have, uh, you can potentially have a homozygous and a heterozygous, and the homozygous phenotype, you know, homozygous mutant would be worse. Um, three is E. So here we're talking about APOE. What would happen if APOE is not working? E for exiting to the liver. I am going to accumulate chylomicron uh, remnants. I'm going to uh, accumulate IDL. Um, and uh, yeah, exactly what we just said. Chylomicron remnants and, and the IDLs uh, are, are going to accumulate. And you get Palmer uh, xanthoma. And then four gets more. We're just making more VLDL. And if you're making more VLDL, you might get a little bit more IDLs and LDLs as well because, of course, they're downstream of that. Uh, secondary, this is probably more common, right? It's, it, what sucks about, I'm going to vent for a second about the whole preclinical, is it takes so much more cognitive effort and time to memorize all of this, but it's just like super rare. Well, this is the way more important thing you're going to see in the clinic. And, uh, you know, and I think even like if we spend so much time looking at this, we might think this is more important, but this is more important. But again, you'll, you're going to see both. You know, there's the short-term goal, do well in your MBME, and the long-term goal, be a good doctor. Uh, so short-term, you need to know both. Long-term, this one's more important, I think. Um, hypothyroid, I always, you know, uh, thyroid helps, does a bunch of things, but it can help increase your metabolic activity. If you're decreasing your metabolic activity, um, you're probably not burning your, your, your fat. You're going to accumulate fat, and it's not needed as much. I'm sure it's more complicated, but that's how I thought of the link there. Um, you just eat too many brownies, too much fried chicken. Um, uh, too much alcohol. Remember earlier we said that uh, you know you oxidize ethanol to acetaldehyde that generates an NADH. Acetaldehyde to acetate that generates another NADH. You have this NADH overload. It makes your body think that there's like we're great. We have so much energy. Look at all of this NADH, and it might prevent like OAA from forming. And so if you don't have OA, you don't have acetyl-CoA to combine with anything. So what does acetyl-CoA do? Well, yeah, it's going to give you like ketone breath and stuff, but but it's also going to now generate fats. And so uh, you get you know, secondary hyperlipidemia. Nephrotic syndrome, we need albumin um, to maintain osmotic gradients uh, for capillary exchange. Um, you're peeing out all of your albumin here. Uh, so your body compensates by generating some VLDL. It's just, it's just a warm body. So back in Gen Chem, remember colligative properties. It, the idea is that we don't, it doesn't matter. The identity of the solute doesn't matter, but it's, it's how much we have of them. And so... In other words, so much proteins in your blood creates this osmotic pull, and that's mainly albumin. And so VLDL just does just more protein, doesn't matter which one, will create an osmotic gradient. So we make more VLDL to compensate. Great, good, for, good news for the osmotic gradient, but bad news for having too much triglycerides in our blood um, and cholesterol, because that's also there. Uh, diabetes, uh, type 1 or 2. Um, so insulin is necessary or, or helpful for an adipocyte to take lipids out of the blood to store them. And so if that doesn't work, we're going to have more lipids in the blood. Additionally, liver uh, insulin is going to help cells like absorb glucose. Um, and if cells aren't absorbing glucose, well, they still have energy demand. So for like, for whatever reason, they're like, hey, new glucose is coming in. Can you bring some fats over? So, you know, fatty acid mobilization, you know, fatty acids in the back of albumin, or we're going to have the LDLs go over. Uh, and, and in either case, you're just going to have more fats in the blood. And then biliary obstruction or cirrhosis, a screwed up liver, um, you cannot properly uh, you know, generate bile and excrete it in the stool. So uh, you're going to have hypercholesterolemia uh, here as well. A uh, bunch of different drugs to bring down our, our levels. Again, we're mainly concerned, not with like being less fat or having less adipocytes, but we're talking about mainly having less fats in the blood. Um, we already talked about this one. Uh, cholestyramine binds bile acids. It sequesters them. Like, uh, I forget the number, but like 5%, 20%, some percent is reabsorbed. Um, and, and uh, he, here we're preventing uh, the reabsorption. This is going to bind to them, and uh, we're going to put more of it out. Um, and uh, the um, – uh, uh, sorry, uh, azetamib, um, this, is, this is just going to go ahead and line the intestines so that we don't absorb cholesterol in the first place. So this is going to lead to floaters, right? We have uh, smelly, uh, fat, lipid-laden poop, and it's, it's going to float. It's going to be like whitish and, and, and you know, kind of yellowish clear. Um, Statins, this is the big one, inhibits MGA-CoA reductase. Not to be confused with earlier, we said MGA-CoA synthase, which is going to play a role in ketogenesis. Um, this is reductase, uh, and this is the rate-limiting step for cholesterol synthesis, so this is going to lower uh, LDL levels. Fibrates, um, somehow they interact with this transcription factor, PPR, gamma, alpha. 
increase the amount of HDL we have, they're also going to somehow enhance the activity of lipo lipoprotein lipase so that we're cleaving the fats from the lipoprotein particles in the blood and then they're absorbed into the, the fats or the, the muscles or whatever. Um, and uh, niacin B3 uh, inhibits lipolysis. Um, and okay, well that means like my fat's gonna stay in my adipocyte, right? No fatty acid mobilization or less. And so that just means I'm gonna have less fats in the blood if more of it is stored in the uh, adipocytes. Um, and TZD uh, this sensitizes you to insulin. And we just saw a second ago that a secondary hyperlipidemia is caused by diabetes and insulin issues. So this is kind of the opposite. This is a medication for diabetes. Um, more fatty acid uptake to adipocytes and muscles, less in the blood. Uh, and and uh, also sensitizing to insulin, I'm going to take up more sugar from the blood, um, which means that I don't actually need the beta oxidation and the fat delivery for energy um, because the glucose is, is going to work fine. Uh, and then pancreatic lipase inhibitors, um, bile emulsifies and the lipase breaks down. And so if we're not breaking down, we're, it's harder to absorb and you're just going to poop out all your fat, you get more floaters.